Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you that are new, my name is Kadeen. Today's video is something completely different and it's just a subject I felt like I needed to have my input on. If you've been following the news, you will know the case of George Floyd that happened on Monday. This video is going to be about why the Black Lives Matter movement is still as relevant today as it was six, seven years ago when it first came around. A little backstory of the Black Lives Matter movement is that it started in 2013 because of the hashtag Black Lives Matter um, became trending on Twitter. The start of this was back when George Zimmerman was acquitted of the shooting of Trevor Martin back in 2012. But then the movement didn't become nationally recognised until um, two deaths in 2014. The first one of Michael Brown in Ferguson and the second of Eric Garner in New York City. You probably are already aware of Black Lives Matter, but you might not know the full story of what it is or and like why it started. Trayvon Martin was a 17 year old African American teenager and yeah he was murdered back in 2012 by George Zimmerman. With Trayvon he was with his father visiting his father's fiance and his father and his, um, his fiance had gone out for dinner that night, so him and his stepbrother were staying in watching TV, playing video games. When Trayvon decided to go to the shop, and all he went and got was a bag of Skittles and an Arizona watermelon drink. Nothing illegal that he shouldn't have had on him whatsoever. George Zimmerman had seen him in the neighbourhood and called the police to report suspicious behaviour. George Zimmerman then proceeded to approach Trayvon and an altercation arise. Okay, so this um, altercation led to Trayvon being shot in the chest. With this, it made national news with ra um, rallies, marches and protests happening all across America. And students at the school where Trayvon went ended up holding a walkout in memory of Trayvon. And then, yeah, then in 2013, a group of people walked from Jacksonville to Sanford where Trayvon was murdered. And this walk lasted for six days and was called the Walk for Dignity. And then, yeah, this made national news and was a huge, huge case in America. So the next case is that of Michael Brown, who was 18 years old at the time of the incident. And he was shot in Ferguson by the police officer Darren Wilson. And Brown was with his friend, who was 22 years at, um, at the time, who was called Dorian Johnson. Yes, yeah, so Wilson claimed that Brown attacked him from in the car and was trying to gain control of the gun and it, until it um, fired in the car. This then led to Brown and Johnson fleeing and Wilson then decided to chase them for a short pursuit and then Brown turned around and allegedly charged at Wilson which then led him to shoot again. But Johnson denies these claims and said that Wilson had actually approached Brown and Johnson and had attacked Brown, threatening him and then proceeded to shoot. This then led Brown and Johnson to flee. After a short pursuit where Wilson had fired the gun again, Brown had stopped and raised his arms and turned around, which is then when Wilson proceeded to shoot it again and um, until he had fallen to the ground. So there was a total of 12 shots fired, six of them hit Brown. This case alone made, again, major headlines all around the world. With then there was very a, a lot of protests happening within Ferguson, many p peaceful, but some did get violent where police had to come out in riot gear and patrol the streets 24-7 because of how serious the situation had got. And yeah, again, Wilson was cleared of all charges, like in the, also in the case of Trevor Martin, where George Zimmerman was acquitted of all charges as well. The next case is that of Eric Garner, and he was 44 years old at the time of the incident, and this was in New York City. Officer da um, Daniel Pantaleo, I think I'm pronouncing that right, put Garner in a chokehold whilst arresting him under the suspicion of selling cigarettes without a tax stamp. Whilst in the chokehold, Garner repeated the phrase, I can't breathe, 11 times until he became unconscious, which was then when the police actually let go and left him lying on the floor unconscious for at least seven minutes until an ambulance had turned up. The medical examiner on the case had declared Garner's death as a homicide and the cause of death was from being choked whilst the police officers were trying to arrest him. Five months after his death, the jury had decided to not indict um, the officer um, Pantaleo and he was free of all charges. And it wasn't until August 2019, so five years after the case, 
that the officer was actually fired from being a police officer. And that brings us to now, which is the case of George Floyd, which we may have seen all over the news recently. And he was a 46 year old man from Minneapolis. And this case happened on Monday the 25th of May. So three days ago from when I'm filming this, because it is now Thursday. There is video footage all online that I have personally seen and it was very heartbreaking to see. And it was of Officer Derek Chauvin and he had arrested George Floyd for allegedly using a counterfeit $20 note in a store. And whilst he was in handcuffs, the officer had his knee on Floyd's neck for at least eight minutes whilst he was repeating again that he couldn't breathe and then became unconscious and passed away at the scene of the incident. And this has now led to all four police officers involved in that arrest to have lost their jobs and the FBI are now investigating it. This is only four cases that I've mentioned out of hundreds of cases that happen in America of police brutality and it's not just America, it's all over. And this is why Black Lives Matter is still such an important movement because there's still so much injustice when it comes to police brutality and those of black people who get racially profiled for fitting a stereotype and guns are pulled more often than not, which resolves in a murder of an innocent black man, mainly an innocent black men, especially innocent black teens. And this is something that is very important to me because again, obviously I am a young black male. I have been racially profiled before. Me and my family have all been randomly stop searched because we've fit a profile that they have received. And it's things like this, it just isn't okay. And it needs to be more spoken about. Things as well, yeah, we can talk about it as much as possible and we will and I will never stop fighting for equal rights. Especially, I, I will always work on Black Lives Matter and it's such an important movement that needs to never be forgotten and constantly worked on and I think everyone needs to do it. If you see some injustice you need to call it out, you need to be vocal about it because your voice is just as important even if you've never had any racial incident happen against you, if you see it happen you need to call it out and this is where white privilege does come into play. And a lot of people are like no white privilege is just an excuse and all this stuff like no you need to recognize white privilege is there and you can recognize white privilege as a positive thing to use that as your to your advantage to advocate for black people who aren't as privileged as you are because of the color of your skin like an example of white privilege if you're approached by a police officer you're less likely for it to be seen as you being a more aggressive just for even if you're doing the exact same response as what we are even if you talk back to a police officer as a white person, you are less likely to be seen as a threat. Whereas a black person, if they answer back, we're seen as rude, not following the instruction, resisting arrest when our white counterpart does not get seen as that. My characteristics, I'm a very loud, outspoken person and I will always speak my mind. And if I don't like something, I will call it out because that's how I've been raised. It's happened to me on multiple occasions, especially in workplaces and stuff, whenever I've been provoked, if, well, as soon as I speak out, it's me that's in the wrong. I'm the aggressor and the person that I've called out on their behavior is the victim. And even if it's not intentionally racist, it's subconsciously, it is there that black people are always seen as in a much more aggressive nature than their white counterparts. And this is things that people need to start addressing more and speaking up on. Because yeah, you may not understand what we are going through, but you can empathize with the unfair treatment that you are witnessing and making a stand with it and be on the right side of the movement. One thing that really like, irritates me is when people are like, oh no, all lives matter. Yes, all lives matter. But when it comes to Black Lives Matter, it's highlighting the, in the injustice that is treated when a black person is murdered compared to anyone else. And it's these sort of things that it's just not okay and society in general has progressed a lot in the last 10 years but there's still a huge improvement that needs to be done and we can't do it alone we need everyone on our side fighting for what they see as wrong because then that way it's more likely to be listened to with us it's always oh you're just pulling the race card the one thing i can probably say is i've only ever used the race card when there has been racial intent behind an incident that has occurred. Yeah, as a black person, I notice 
racial injustice and uh, like indirect racism constantly. It's just such as like, if it's later at night and I'm walking down the street, I'll see someone cross the road. Whereas if I'm with a group of people who are white, then it doesn't happen. It's just when I'm alone or if I'm with my family, these things happen. And yeah, like to most people that have never dealt with racism, they'll be like, oh no, they're just crossing the road because it's people that are like just precaution. But no, it only ever happens if I'm on my own or with my family members who are also black. And it's this little things like that, that we know is more than what you would because you've never had to look out for it. And this is why people say we play the race card too often, but it's because there's a lot of indirect racism and subconscious racism that a lot of people have ingrained into them that they don't even realize. If one of your friends start, makes a racist remark, call them out on it. Don't just let it slide. If it's a, a racist relative, call them out on that behavior, challenge that behavior. And then from there, you can get the conversation going and that's when things will start to progress forward in society once we all start calling out racist behavior rather than letting it slide and this is what this video is about just to highlight the importance of everyone needing to use their voice in a positive way and again use your white privilege for positive you may not think you're privileged but if you actually sit and think about it or even just read up about these cases that i have mentioned or even any more cases because there's a whole lot. I will leave links below to articles all about these different um, cases that I have spoke about and more. And just think, you were in that situation, how differently would it be? Because nine out of 10 times, it would not be ending in the same result as it would for us, ending in us being murdered. Yeah, I know obviously it's quite a heavy subject that I've mentioned today, but it just wouldn't feel right with me if I just didn't mention this at all on my channel because the main reason I made this channel is because I want to be a voice for people that those that don't have a voice. I want to make a change in society. I want to make a stand against racism. I want to be an activist. Like I support Black Lives Matter. I am the sort of person that will always fight for what I believe in and what is right. And that's just who I am and I'm never gonna stop being that way because we need more people like it in the world. So, so I really hope you guys have learned a lot about this. And again, please definitely read up more on these cases and follow the news and just start noticing little things that you may have not noticed before or may have not viewed as racist intent. Because once you do, you'll realise it happens a lot more often than what you would think. Thank you guys for watching. I would really appreciate if you could give this a share and just get the word out and just help to educate more people on the situation of what is still going on in today's society. So I just wanna say thank you guys for watching. Please, please give this like um, video a thumbs up. It will really help for this to get recommended more. And yeah, if you aren't already, please definitely subscribe to my channel. Um, I am gonna start talking about more serious topics because like that's just who I am. Like, it started out as a beauty channel and I will still be doing my beauty, but I am gonna incorporate talking about important issues like this more often. So yeah, so thank you guys and I will see you in the next video.